Thank you, Chair. Um, and so, first of all, I'd like to just welcome um, some guests that we have uh, in the gallery. Luck. So, we have Caroline and Martin Smith, who are the couple that originally came to me many, many years ago um, with this particular issue. And it's taken us this long to get uh, a resolution, but they're very, very welcome today. And they're also accompanied, Chair, by Anne Marie Marta, Sarah Bean, Georgina Culhaw, and Mary Halford. Um, and you're all very, very welcome, and I'm glad you're here today. Chair, um, I'm introducing a bill that, you know, at its concept is the most simple, um, unoffensive uh, little piece of legislation that introduces a non statutory register um, for the tremendous loss that thousands of families and women feel every single year. And, you know, in my heart, it's kind of hard to believe that it didn't already exist. And it's also incredibly frustrating to know that I was the minister responsible for the General Registry Office when Caroline and Martin came to me first. And considerable blockages were put in the way of the then minister, which was me, in order to be able to achieve something that is, you know, humongous for the people who lose their loved members of their family. But such a small thing to do um, by the state to recognise that loss and indeed the life you know, that was um, their child, their family member. So I have to say, I'm incredibly proud um, of the little body of work that we have done um, in the last number of years, to be able to stand here with the actual pieces of paper in my hand, with my name on it and Mary's name on it, and she's my co-sponsor uh, for this bill, that represents years of work uh, of the families who are represented here. But there are so many more families, because you hear like every year, this might be not something that's commonly known, because we don't speak about loss. We're not very good at it in this country. We tend to bottle it up and keep quiet. And even when we know somebody else is lost, we tend not to speak to them because we don't know what to say to them. But 15,000 pregnancies um, are lost uh, in miscarriage um, every year. One in five women who get pregnant every single year lose their baby at some point during the term of their pregnancy. And for those that are, and I say this and it sounds wrong, fortunate enough to lose their baby after 24 weeks, or if the baby has reached you know, the milestone of 500 grams in birth when the baby is born, they get a document, they get a stillbirth register, and the state acknowledges both the life and the loss of that much wanted child. But for anybody whose baby is born either days before that very arbitrary definition um, of a stillbirth that's laid down by the WHO, which was one of the reasons why we couldn't or weren't let do it uh, a number of years ago uh, to apply this register, a baby that might be only one gram shy of the 500 grams or one day shy doesn't exist in the eyes of the state, never ever you know, hiccuped in the womb, never turned, just doesn't exist. And for those parents, that is not acceptable. Um, and apart from the state having an obligation to recognise you know, families in their entirety and in all of their shapes and forms um, and their gains, it's also the state's responsibility to look after the losses of families and to recognise the loss. And what we've done by the absence of this non statutory register, which isn't going to infer any rights any financial benefits, any social welfare protections, and, and maybe it should, but that's for another day's work. All it's going to do is to acknowledge the life and the loss of a baby that doesn't reach the stillbirth definition laid down by the WHO. And so, from my mind, what we've done for years is wholly disrespect the grief and probably in a lot of cases interrupt the grieving process of families who've lost their babies. Um, we, we, we have had these conversations over the years um, regarding other legislation, um, but we all agree as mammies that, you know, and Mary said it here last week when we introduced the bill, when you do that first pregnancy test, and sometimes you have to do it the second time or the third time just to be absolutely sure, the two lines means there's a baby in there. And there's a lovely fruit of the womb um, it, calendar that shows you what your baby is like at four weeks and it, it likens it to the you know the fruits and you go from having a strawberry right up to having a melon and you know it, it's a wonderful experience and Mary said last week that that you know whole life is lived in the first couple of hours and what we've done to all of these families the 15,000 families a year every year for as long as you know this has been in existence 
is halt them and halt their grieving process because we haven't recognised that they've actually lost anything at all. And that inherently is wrong. And so what today's register is going to do is to absolutely allow those women, those families, those people who lose babies between the time of being medically certified as being pregnant, uh, right up to and before you reach the milestone of uh, 500 grams or 24 weeks. If you unfortunately lose your baby during that time, you're going to be allowed to apply for a register that shows the state acknowledges both the life and the loss. And that's all it's going to do. It's not something for people to be afraid of. I've had a number of people contact me in the last week that they're afraid it'll do something to some other piece of legislation or it'll, you know, they're afraid it'll infer rights. Well, first of all, I think we should have rights. That's the first thing I'm going to say. But the only thing that this is going to give a right to are the families to have a legal and statutory, even though it's non-statutory, recognition um, and certificate of the baby that they were carrying and the baby that they lost that doesn't reach the milestones um, as set down by the medical definitions. And so for Caroline um, and Martin and their little man who actually was born and passed away seven years ago today, so the timing of this bill is the universe because it wasn't anything to do with me or Mary, um, it's the universe telling me that this is absolutely the right thing to do and it was absolutely the right thing for that wonderful couple to keep nagging me for all the years that they've been nagging me to make sure that we got to this stage. And so I just want to say on the record, um, Minister, and thank you, Peter, for coming here today. Um, I have to say I'm incredibly pleased that Minister Humphreys has asked Cabinet not to oppose this bill because I don't know how I would feel today if we weren't. And so what I will be asking to do, because the, um, the feedback that I've got from my Shannon colleagues uh, is that you know they're all supportive of this bill because it is incredibly simple but incredibly powerful is that we may do committee and report stages together chair um, given that there won't be any opposition to it and we may do it very very quickly so that we can get this bill into the doll and what i'll ask you minister is that because there isn't an equivalent of me in the doll and mary and i are both the co-sponsors would you be able to comment or at least come back to me uh, as to whether if and when the bill passes this house that the minister will take it uh, in her own name to the lower house and to pass it and to put it on our statute books so that you know very very shortly we will be able to issue the certificates to any of the 15,000 women and families who've lose or who have lost their baby this year and every year going forward thank you chair